Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Mayuko and welcome back to my channel. All right, so today I wanted to talk about is software engineering a long-term career? Some of you are currently trying to break into the industry or are really considering it, and others of you have already put time in as a software engineer and you're thinking, is this something that I can keep doing for 10, 20, 30 years? The spoiler here is that yes, a career in tech is something that you can do long-term, but today I wanted to dive into the specific parts of why. To do this, I'm gonna introduce you to some different perspectives from tech veterans from across the industry so that by the end of the video you can answer for yourself whether this is a career you want to do long term. And before we move on I wanted to say thank you to Formation for sponsoring today's video. They have an incredible training program for engineers with a few years of experience who want to level up their skills and we recently just announced a scholarship the Mayugo X Formation Diversity Scholarship, which will cover the full tuition, a value of $7,500, to their interview prep program. This program helps engineers fill specific skill gaps, get mentorship from super senior engineers, and get referrals directly into the top companies in the industry. In fact, all of today's guests are a part of the formation team where they help mentor and advise their students. So if you like what these people have to say, chances are you're gonna like the program. The program was founded by former Nextdoor and Meta engineers. It's three to six months long. You can do it part-time and they also offer an income share agreement so you can pay zero until you get the job. You can check out their program and apply for free at formation.dev slash Mayugo, also linked in the description box. You can also check out the scholarship linked below. Thank you again so much to Formation for sponsoring. Now let's get back to the video. So is software engineering a long-term career? Let's find out. I actually started uh, in the industry out of college back in 2013. Uh, so I went to UC Davis up in Northern California, almost nine years now. I definitely feel like there, there's a lot of opportunity in the industry. It's a growing industry. So ever since graduation, I graduated in 2012. So it was 10 years, not counting Got internships, it. yeah. <laughs> I think it's definitely a long-term career. I know so many people and I have so many colleagues who have celebrated their five year, 10 year, 20 year in the in the same job and some sometimes even like in the same team. I also asked them before and of course, you know, there are good faces and bad faces. There are like moments of doubts for everybody. I first got into tech when I was a freshman in college. So that would have been 95, pushing 25 years. Well, if the careers of these three people is any testament, it definitely is. And I mean, there's a lot to love about the job. The compensation is typically good enough to sustain a comfortable standard of living. You can have a lot of impact with the code that you're writing. Also, a lot of companies are allowing you to work more flexibly in terms of location and work hours. And there's always new stuff to learn. In short, it pays well, it's rewarding, it's flexible, and it's it stays fun because there's always new stuff. But typically when people are thinking about whether a career is long-term, they're thinking of a couple of different factors. One is the stability and growth of the industry that they're in. And the other is whether the job is like interesting enough for lack of a better phrase to continue doing for many, many years. So first let's talk about that stability and growth part. This means things like, is this industry gonna continue to exist for many years and are they gonna keep hiring? Or is it a fad? Like, will it be replaced by automation? Or maybe the need for that role is just gonna completely disappear. I feel like since I was in college, you know, coming into the industry about nine years ago, companies were talking about like a shortage of either software engineers or just programmers in general, right? And as I kind of alluded to, you know, you can be a programmer and not even necessarily be working in the software industry, right? Like there are biologists that write code, civil engineers, mechanical engineers, you know, it's specifically coming into, you know, the software engineering industry. There's always more these days that, that companies are trying to do. And, you know, long gone are the days where you might have one person or two people writing the code for, you know, some massive software, some, some super useful software. At this point, the expectations are very high. And if you're making software, people expect it to have a lot of functionality. So we have massive teams at this point, even if like a, your direct team is maybe eight people, nine people, we're part of a larger organization. So I just feel like there are so many opportunities and the industry is only growing. That's Afiz, an engineer at Meta who works in VR, who's had a prolific career in gaming and what he says completely tracks. I mean, if we think about the amount of technology that we use and depend on in our daily lives over time, then really it's only gone up. New apps, services, games, products are coming out every single day to improve things in our personal lives, our workflow, our 
or health or are just downright interesting. Even in our economy right now where hiring freezes and layoffs are routine, there's still gonna be a continued demand for software engineers. It's, it's just, there's always gonna be like people who, a need for people who can think about complex systems, design creative solutions, creatively think about problems. And that's Daniel. He's been working in software for a long time, most notably at Microsoft and Meta, and he's seen how the industry has changed since like the 90s. A lot of things have gotten easier, right? The production, the time to, to completion or time to market for a new novel system is a lot smaller. So I think productivity will continue to go up. And what software engineers do might look different, but I don't think the need for software engineers is gonna go down. These days, there's software in everything from household items like microwaves or like dog toys or even key fobs to public services like train schedules or car registration renewal systems or maybe like checking out a book at the library. Not to mention software is also used in a lot of life-threatening and life-saving situations as well. Things like calculating the rate of climate change by measuring icebergs using machine learning to monitoring glucose levels and alerting caregivers and patients about anomalies. And that's honestly one of the best parts about this industry, like the fact that you can apply your skills to a breadth of different topics. So there are just many different combinations of positions and roles uh, and responsibilities that people can gain within the tech bubble. <laughs> and that's Cherry Hertz, an engineer turned engineering manager who's worked in cloud and infrastructure for the past decade. Thinking about the length sometimes could freak you out uh, versus thinking about, you know, what is the next excitement for me? Like, what is the next thing that I want to do? Try not to limit yourself with the specific field or the specific theme of this company that you've worked for. And this kind of goes into like that second factor of whether software engineering is a long-term career. Like, does it stay interesting enough? And I think Cherry's advice here is awesome because it's a mindset that I hear from like seasoned engineers about staying in this career long-term. And that's around the spirit of exploration and curiosity. There are different paths to get into the industry. And then depending on the path you take, you're open to different areas, right? So you have more mobility, I think, if you go the college route, et cetera. But there are still a lot of things you can do even if you don't go that route, because there are a lot of companies who just need people that can write code, for example. I, I think that being intentional about what you want to do is super helpful because we're people, we get bored. You know, like it doesn't matter how much you enjoy what you're doing. If you're doing it for like 10, 15 years, you're going to want to try something new. So I think at that point, branching out and being open to learning because there are always new things happening in the industry. And I think that if you're open to learning and willing to go and try to pick those things up, you can branch out and jump into a new area. And that will keep things fresh and prevent you from feeling like you've been doing the same thing. I find the, the problems fun. I find the people really fun. I've crossed paths with a lot of really awesome, wonderful people. So yeah, when we look at it, software engineering is definitely a long-term career. But something that I realized recently is that it doesn't seem like there's a lot of software engineers out there with like over 20 years of experience. And I was thinking about this because when this question first popped up of like whether this is a long-term career, I realized that in the general landscape of things, it felt like most software engineers out there had like 10 or less years of experience. This 2022 annual survey from Stack Overflow also shows similar results where most of the survey respondents have had 10 years or less of coding experience. And that got me thinking. Are people leaving the industry when they get to a certain level? Or is it that there's a huge number of new people coming in that the median years of experience just tends to skew lower? My hypothesis is that the median time in, in the software industry or in tech is low because of people coming in. What business these days does not need some amount of software engineering? Like even if it's just like you're a mom and pop, I don't know, you store on Etsy even, right? You like, you, you're crafty, but you need a web presence to sell your thing. For as long as the demand for software engineers is increasing, that's gonna very easily allow it to continue to be lopsided on the junior side. But then there's something else 
interesting at play here as well. Like you mentioned, you know, junior to eventually senior to staff. Not everyone is going to get to staff and nobody should want everyone to get to staff. I don't think that should be a goal, right? You're always going to need more people on the ground, like doing the work that you need, like chefs and, you know, calling the shots. And this makes sense because university computer science programs are like bursting at the seams. There's a lot of great boot camps out there these days and online resources for teaching yourself how to code are readily available more than ever before. And so it would not be an understatement to say that there are way more software engineers at the junior level than ever before, which, you know, is a good sign that this industry is continuing to grow. So anyway, Careers are a highly personal thing, I think for most people these days. Some people do their life's work at these jobs, and even if you don't, you spend a non-trivial amount of time being a software engineer doing that work, especially if you look at it over a long period of time. And luckily, because of how healthy the industry is, Software engineering is something that you can bounce back and forth between with some people going into things like product management or UX design for a few years and others stepping way out to things like YouTube or like baking or comedy or anything else like completely different. And so I wanted to ask Cherry, Daniel and Afiz their advice on what it takes to have a long-term career in software engineering. Career means different things to everybody, I think. We'll say to be able to really have a career that you enjoy or like that fits as a part of your life, you have to kind of calibrate it with other aspects that you care about. Does it really make you happier if you work on a different project every year and make an impact on those 10, 20, 30 projects? Or does it make it happier that you grow with a team, with a product, with a company, uh, and 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 see you know every phase of that product or that team is making sure that you take breaks. Uh, there have been I haven't even been in the industry for that long, but there have been times where I felt burnt out. You know that's during my nine years in the industry, and it's because like I mentioned, you know the work isn't easy. It's tiring. There are times where you will be up late at night. So making sure that you take that time for yourself, whether it's just taking a vacation or even just taking a day off to just sit in your house or your apartment and relax. And then on top of that, I'd say networking. Networking has been invaluable, like since college. And I was actually taught that pretty early because I was super shy. In short, I'll summarize, I don't remember the whole story, but I wanted to talk to somebody and I was shy. And um, I was part of Nesby in college. And Nesby is like the National Society of Black Engineers. And the president at the time said, it's what defines you. I said, you know what, that's a good point. So I went and I talked to the person and then, you know, like just from that point on, I've been less shy. You'd be surprised, you know, how I was able to like get into some of these companies. It's just because so-and-so that I met randomly at a conference or just said hi to at some event happened to work at this place. And they were like, oh, hey, come, come check out my company, you know? And I went and I met people and then it was I, when I was looking for something new, you know, I was able to just reach out to this person and interview, you know? So I think that networking is huge. This is gonna be highly personal, it's two things. One is um, hopefully obvious to most people, which is work-life balance. If your job is everything, you're setting yourself up for all kinds of, of badness. You know, if, if the job doesn't work out for some reason, then and, and your whole self is sort of wrapped up in that, you're gonna have a harder time adapting to, to coming up with something new. But also just having, having balance in life will make things more sustainable. The second thing is have high expectations for the types of leaders in your organizations and don't put up with toxic environments you know, that don't work for you. And what doesn't work for you might be different than what doesn't work for me. People are introverts and extroverts as a simple breakdown. The kind of work situation where person A will thrive is gonna be different from where person B will thrive. You learn about yourself and the kinds of teams that you work best in and find those teams. Thank you so much for watching this video. And thank you so much to Cherry, Daniel, and Afiz for being a part of this video. Again, make sure to check out the Mayuko X Formation Diversity Scholarship in the description box down below. I am so, so excited to bring this to you. Applications are due August 19th, 2022. And as always, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already, and I will see you next time. Bye!